Hello everybody. So some of you might be wondering what policies are actually available in game. This is not going to be a policy tutorial per se, but just a quick and general overview of what policies are available for specifically the union side. Um, the first policy is the Underground Railroad. And just by reading the tooltip, offers substantial support for an abolitionist underground organization that helps fugitive slaves from the south avoid recapture and escape to the north. Initial, initial slave workforce for CSA minus 10% with annual reduction of further minus 5%, increasing production costs and reducing available recruits in the south. If you want to already tighten the screws on the uh, already meager confederate industry this would be a good one to do kansas a free state which is a historical one encourage the anti-slavery movement in kansas northern support in kansas plus 25 and plus five in all free states go west encourage people to move to the west coast of the united states northern support in california and oregon plus 25 population 20 plus 20 percent and recruitment made possible in the said states the trade capacity of each the trade capacity of santa fe and oregon trails doubled so that would increase um already strong union recruiting standards and um, benefit to economy support abolitionism official support for the for hard line abolitionists will make sure that southern sympathies within the union will be kept in check discouraging secession southern support in all states within the union minus 10. enforce neutrality act enforce the 1794 neutrality act this will prevent adventurers and filibusters from freely continuing their endeavors in latin america relations with european nations greatly improved with the chance of intervention against the Union minus 10. This policy is required for level four and five diplomacy policies during the campaign. Breadbasket, the policy for America to feed the world. All farms will start the campaign with a higher upgrade level. Relations with Europe plus 10, this policy is required for level three and four agricultural policies. Um, this sounds like a powerful policy Plus, it, because it does two things, it gives you greater agricultural capacity and helps keep Europe out of the war. Industrialization. All heavy industries will start the campaign with higher upgrade level. The union will start the campaign with more railroad lines built and immigration from Europe increases the population within the union by 20% but lowers the unity due to religious unrest, reducing national morale by minus five. This policy is required for level three and four industrialization policies during the campaign. Security measures, with increased security measures, the flow of weapons from the United States armories to Southern states is reduced. The Confederacy will start the game with 50% less available ships and weapons. CSA morale is minus five. Talk about kicking a man while they're down. Indian Wars continue the policy of re relocating the indigenous tribes with force when necessary to allow American settlers to expand their territories. This requires a U.S. regular army to increase in size to cover the vast frontier and will keep the army fighting in, in the ensuing Indian Wars military experience in Union and CSA plus five and union morale plus five so oh, it actually kind of gives a benefit to confederate morale too that's interesting union pacific railroad support the construction of the union pacific railroad connecting the atlantic and pacific coast will increase trade with the western states the game will start with the union pacific railroad built and the union controlling trade to the pacific coast union credit rating plus two Railroad transport capacity and construction speed plus 25%. So 
So there you have the policy choices. You get to choose three or stick with the historic. And you can see the highlighted historical ones. Kansas, a free state, industrialization, and Indian wars. So those are the union policies. Thank you.